hello everyone and welcome back if you are a regular if not if this is your first time watching my videos i appreciate you even attempting to stick with me so i'm getting straight into it starting with my brows of course and what i use for my brows is actually elmer's glue i have not found a product yet that tops my elmer's glue this is my go-to for now however i did recently try the anastasia brow freeze and maybe i will make a video on it on my review and how i feel about it because i really really do love that product so that might be my new go-to but we shall see till then this is what i'm using and then i always go in with that one more coat i know it looks crazy but you gotta trust the process because it doesn't dry purple and you can always remove the excess with like a wet cloth or something because it's so easy to work with since it's water activated um yeah so it's it's very safe to use nothing too crazy on your hair it's not going to pull out any hairs when you go to remove it especially because if you put a little bit of water and rub it around it's activated all over again so this is how i prefer my brows to look for the most part and yeah so we're gonna go shading with the eye today we're doing a purple look with some glitter and this is that me myself and mitchell palette and i'm gonna just go ahead and prime my lids with this elf concealer in the shade light beige i believe um also all my products are listed down below in the description or if you are on my instagram they are always under the video section of my page for now that's how my format is now i don't know how it will be in the future but that's just the easiest way for me to go about it especially because i always have a lot of lash companies that i work with so it's my way of like sprinkling in some extra love with a extra post all right, so this is that little shape that is trending. I saw a couple girls use it on TikTok or kind of do it on TikTok. I don't remember the first girl that I saw, but immediately I just wanted to try. That was me blowing the excess, don't even. But I just wanted to try it because I wanted to see my spin of it. This day that I tried it, it was a little bit lightweight. And I think if I were to ever do this look again, I would do it a lot more dramatic but i kind of just wanted to see how it would look in overall basically so i just went ahead and created the shape on both sides as you can see it kind of looks like half of a heart um in that inner corner and then the second little shape is kind of going to be like a little paisley like what you would see on a handkerchief but i did kind of extend the ends of it to go outward and down if that makes sense you can kind of see me curve the ends of it a little bit towards my brow and then a little bit down towards my ear I guess it's a good reference point but I did also want to mention when you're doing the shape and you're creating that first starting point you always want to make sure that you get a good amount of depth from that dark eyeshadow that's going first just because you are going to blend it out like so, just buffing the edges, and you don't want to lose any of that pigment. Um, you could also add it back afterwards, but it helps to like make it not look like there's any patchy spots missing um, dark pigment or dark purple um, that we're using today. And it looks a lot more smooth, and it has a little smoother of a finish to it. So I just went ahead and cleaned that brush off a little bit, kind of dusted it off um, with one of those what are they called like when you transition the <laughs> you transition your brush and you like twirl it around i believe it's like a i'm gonna link it below but i believe it's like a makeup or brush cleaner type of thing it's no soap or anything if you know you know but anyways i went in with a little bit of a lighter purple and i just went directly on top of that dark purple and just started buffing it in and blending it above that line just to give it that good um little blend to it um, I also didn't want to do that like liner on my lash line just because I knew it was going to get covered with my lashes anyway. So I kind of just did these two shapes and kind of kept it pushing, but I, go, <laughs> I did go back in with that dark purple. I don't know why, but I've been slurring my words all day long. I think I'm really tired. Um, I definitely need to get some good sleep tonight because I have not been doing that. But yeah, so if I keep messing up my words, I'm not going to keep re-recording this because this is the little... See what I mean? You see what I mean? Like, they don't want to see me shine, but this is the fourth time I have recorded this little section. So we're just going to keep it pushing. And if I mess up my words, it is what it is. But anyways, this is that same brush. I, if I had to do a look with one brush, I could really make it work. Like, I can really make it work. I've had to do it before. I'll do it again. 
But yeah, so that's what I'm doing. This is that same brush I've been using this whole time, and then same dark purple. I went ahead and reiterated that depth that we lost, and then I cut the crease of this one, but I didn't record it since I was having so much trouble with it. I don't know what happened, but I kept like, I kept messing it up and having to fix it, messing it up. So I was just like, all right, let me do it real quick, and then we'll record this part. JK, this is me deepening out the purple before I do the second cut crease. But I did make sure to record the in inner half a heart cut crease because I know like a lot of people like to see what it is like, like how I do my cut creases and stuff. Since I don't really pat, I kind of like draw um, with the concealer more and then I'll fill in that little space, which is exactly what I just did. But I also got a really small brush so that if I wanted to put it flat to make it look like the dome shape, um, it would be good to be that size. Um, that just made it a lot easier for me, but you could also just like freehand it uh, if you're talented because I'm not <laughs> just kidding. I am talented, but I, I got a shaky hand. So one thing I could never be is a tattoo artist. Like I would literally get sued. And then right here, I went ahead and set it with a true to skin tone eyeshadow shade. This is still from that made by Mitchell. I mean, I'm so sorry. Me and myself in Mitchell palette. Um, I just like this yellow that they have in there because it really does match my skin as soon as I'm done applying my foundation and stuff. So it's pretty satisfying to do cut creases and then set it with a like almost skin like finish because it looks like you didn't do a cut crease and that you kind of just like freehanded it, but it's not the case. Um, it actually takes a lot of time to do cut creases. So, you know, I just really like the look of that like skin is underneath. I've always wanted to do a cut crease and like leave the bottom part empty and like show all my freckles and my eyelids and stuff, but I haven't got that far. <laughs> so I have a lot of ideas that I just don't do. All right, this is like a completely nameless glitter that I found in my makeup kit, um, but you could find similar ones, eye safe ones. I'm not so sure, but you know, I really don't use eye safe glitter. That's like one of my guilty pleasures. I just use whatever glitter looks good. And I just take it off with tape instead of scrubbing it on my eye because I don't want to get it in my eye. But also, I don't want to cut my eyelids. Like, that's one of the most painful things when your eyelids are, like, super raw and they hurt from, like, getting glitter off your eyes. Like, that really sucks. So, I completely stopped rubbing my eyes with glitter and, like, makeup wipes, anything. My cellar water, none of it. I don't scrub my eyes anymore. I just use tape. Press it in, make sure it's like really on there, like almost like you're waxing your leg. Like you want to just press it on and rip it off. Not like rip it hella hard, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Okay, you get you get where I'm going with this and you just peel it off and it comes off. Ma majority of it will come off with tape. I've never had a really a problem. I haven't had to scrub my eyes in a, a really long time. So that says enough. I use, I use glitter pretty often. So, um... Yeah, I just completely stopped scrubbing it. It hurts too bad. My eyelids are so sensitive and they really used to get really raw. Like, that's so painful. But anyways, this glitter is a little bit... It looks like it's not showing, but it's like this lighting wasn't really doing it any justice. It's like really pretty in person. Um, but it has like a purple reflector to it almost, but it is clear when you turn in certain angles. So it looks like nothing is there and less certain lighting is hitting it but i liked how it looked um i did end up adding a duo chrome to it afterwards after i was done recording so i didn't get it on camera but this is how it looks so far with that purple glitter alone and i thought it was really beautiful and very subtle but very dramatic at the same time if that makes sense to you then you know you get me but if not then i don't know what to say to you but I went ahead with my Charlotte Tilbury foundation and I, it does look a little bit liquidy because I had it dripping down my face for a minute because I got distracted because I was watching a movie on my laptop. I'm keeping it real. And I think it did a little, it, it did kind of dry up a little bit, but I just worked with it quick because you know me, I'm quick like that. And I went ahead and just blended that out with my beauty blender, nothing crazy. And uh, yeah, so this is the usual. I already have my primer underneath, which is also in my description because I did forget what I used. That's okay because I never record that part anyway. I always put it in my descriptions. After my foundation, I go straight in with my contour. 
So this is my Bare Mineral Stick Foundation in the shade Sienna, like always. I went a bit lighter with the application today just because, I don't know, I haven't really been filling myself with face makeup lately, just keeping it real. Just, I don't know, sometimes when I break out a lot, I don't like too much foundation or concealer or much product on my face. So I, I kind of focus on like my eyes and my under eye. Yeah, so... But I am going about my routine as I would on any other day, of course, because that's just what I'm used to at this point. So, of course, you know me. I went in with my e.l.f. concealer and I went in to go and brighten. I did not come to play. I came with a super bright concealer and a, a lot of it will oxidize a tiny bit and it kind of sets into your skin. So it doesn't really stay super bright like that, like you think. So what I started doing was setting it with a fair foundation, a pressed powder, instead of like a, a translucent powder, a loose one. Um, and it's been working, or sometimes I'll do both, which I think today in this video I did do both. I can't really remember, because sometimes like I just throw on some more translucent powder off camera, because I just forget to record it. Um, yeah, I don't know how I haven't gotten in the habit of like recording every single thing I do. It's just sometimes like, I feel like little steps aren't necessary. But I guess, yeah, I should show like the many things I do in between just in case. But I do record the most of it. So it's not like I'm jipping you guys with anything of my routine. This is my whole routine. Um, this is me pressing in that loose powder that I mentioned beforehand, not the foundation. Um, this is like my usual routine. I, I only started doing the pressed foundation recently, but I don't do it every single time, like I mentioned. So... I don't think I did it here, but what I would do if I were to do the pressed foundation is just do this lightly, very, very light underneath my eye, and then go in again with that pressed foundation to set underneath my eye. But we didn't need that today, so I went straight in for contouring. The first thing I contour is my nose, and I like to do that because I want my nose to set the longest when I bake it. So it's setting basically while I do my blush, my contour, my powder contour at least and then it gets brushed off at the end right before i spray my face but this is that pink leaf cosmetics roll up and glow up palette i'm like getting so much saliva built up i have not shut up for like two minutes straight but this is that roll up and glow up palette and some bright eyeshadow um just a light eyeshadow to like do the tip and the bridge of my nose and then we're gonna set the sides Everything here is basically baking. It's not going to look super crazy like this when you wipe it off and blend it up. But it is to do some brightening because, you know, we want to hook our nose up sometimes. If you love your nose, that's great. And I do too. I love my nose as well. But sometimes I want to look a little snatched and, you know, contour my nose. It kind of brings it all together sometimes. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong. It doesn't mean you don't like your features like you're contouring. It does not mean you don't like your nose if you're contouring your nose. It's just it's just a step to make up like i really do feel like people really read into that too much like a girl hates her nose because she puts contour and like highlight on her nose it's not true some people just like to enhance their features like myself and like no matter how i contour my nose it would not look like this if my nose didn't look like this so i don't understand that but yes i go ahead and do my powder contour right on top of the areas i did my liquid contour and then straight away, I go with my blush. This is such a pretty blush. Um, this is Roll Up and Glow Up Palette as well from Pink Leaf Cosmetics that I haven't mentioned. My code is MALAYUNAXO. If you guys ever want to make a purchase through Pink Leaf Cosmetics, make sure you guys use that code because it, it really does help, you know. It also helps let her know that some of my followers or people who, you know, watch my videos do go back and get some product it's good things to know but yeah so this is my go-to blush i'm not even just saying it for the video this is like one of my favorite blushes and i go right away with my highlight i feel like i'm going super quick and i'm talking a lot but this is just my routine in a nutshell like in every video besides my eyes my face routine will always be the same and that's you know, which I was gonna, I was gonna say it all like you haven't watched it, but I'm not gonna do that to you. So this is the style 35 from Mona LaBelle. And I wanted to use these because at the end of my video, I ended up putting the duo chrome um, 
flakes on my eyes, which were supposed to go on my eyes, but I misplaced the bag. So this is like truth behind the camera. I misplaced the bag and I found it at the end of the video. So this is why we kind of settled for that purple glitter. It ended up looking way prettier than I expected, which was great. But I did have Mona LaBelle dual chrome flakes in mine. So I will be posting those pictures with those on that that product on my Instagram, but it's not going to be in this video. This is that Pink Leaf Cosmetics Stoned Lip Liner and the shade Cream from e.l.f. in Lipstick. And I really love how this look came out. I think the eyes look really pretty. I think it is a pretty extra look, but it's nothing too crazy. Maybe it's just for me, it doesn't feel crazy because I'm me, but definitely wouldn't wear this to go to Safeway or what I am. You know, recently I've been really liking going out with makeup. <laughs> but anyways, I am very grateful if you got this far in my video. Um, yeah, and I really appreciate you guys who come back to watch my videos consistently. And make sure you like and leave a comment. Tell me something or just subscribe, you know. Keep in track, on track with me. All my socials are at the end of my video. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good rest of your week or next week. Bye.